Hello, everyone. We'll, oh, we got to down the music here. We'll get started here in about two minutes, maybe even one minute. We'll be back in a minute. I got seven o'clock. Does everyone else have seven o'clock? I see some people in the chat. Looks like we've got about 65, 66 people. It's great. Nice to see everyone. Hope that uh, you're staying safe, staying indoors, heeding the do not spread the human malware virus any more than you have to. My name is Kyle. I'm AA0Z, and I'm the president, current president of SLSRC. Thanks for attending. A um, few things about the chat. So I think some people are having some issue with the chat. Here's some, some tips and tricks that uh, might help you. So in order for you to chat, you have to have a Google account and you have to sign up for a YouTube account. So if you have a Google account but can't chat, maybe you haven't signed up for a YouTube account. You have to go through the process. So that might be an issue. Um, whenever you chat a post down there in the chat, uh, put your name and your call sign if you don't have that already in your username so we know who you are. Um, and then the, the stream might be standard definition. You can bump it up to high definition on the, the lower right-hand side of the video player. There's a little, um, it says like uh, HD or SD. If that says SD, you can bump that up to HD. Um, and and view us in high definition if you want. If not, no big deal. Just wanted to let everyone know. And uh, the, the chat is about three or four seconds behind. I'm sorry, the chat is, well, you're seeing the video, and then the chat rolls in about three or four seconds behind uh, what I see. So um, if you don't get an answer right away or, say, hey, you know, I'd like to get some opinions on the chat, and me just sitting here looking at the chat, you'll know why I'm just kind of staring off into space as I'm waiting for you guys to uh, to comment in the chat. Uh, let's see, what else? YouTube announcements. All right, so you're on the SLSRC YouTube. Subscribe down below. Hit that thumbs up button. We have got a lot of material on our YouTube channel. And we post all of the presentations about two to three months after the presentation. So that gives you a chance if you miss the presentation that you can come and, and, and watch it. Um, but if you like what you're seeing, give us the thumbs up. Hit uh, that subscribe button so we can get some more people. And uh, if you want a notification on when we post videos, hit the bell icon. And that will get you notifications. Uh, moving on here. So now we take roll. <laughs> 
Whenever we met in person, we would go around and say your name and your call sign. Obviously, we can't do that. So why don't you uh, put your name and your call sign in the chat so we can take some roll, and we'll see who uh, who pops up here. I see Mark and Bill. Um, Tom, nice to see you, Tom. Rebecca's in there. Bob, W-0-E-J-O, is in the chat. We do this. Hey, Gerald, A-D-0-P-K. Tony's in the chat. Kevin, Paul Kobe. Uh, Bill, Bill Flores, our net control extraordinaire. Mike, hey, Mike, W-0-S-N-D. Russell, George, uh, Jeff, Dan Freeman. Hi, Dan. George, RIT, chair, uh, Chairman. You got Rick. Hope you uh, got your all your SWR questions answered. You got Paul, Jeff. Hey, Thomas, KE0SGU, down south. Jeff, hey, Jeff. Hope you're doing some CW on QRP. I think you'll find this, uh, this program interesting. Dolores. Hi, Dolores. So we got some people checking in. We've got about 70 users, 70 people streaming, which is great. Yeah, keep it coming with the uh, the roll count here. We're going to get a list of everyone. Bob and Pam, hello. Brendan, hello. Tina. Oh, Tom. I think Tom is in there, too. Hello, Tom. K0HHB. Brenda, hello. Hi, Kai. All right. Travis. Hi, Travis. Hey, Larry. Carl, WA4AQW. All right. Good deal. Thanks for everyone for checking in. Appreciate it. Is there any new techs or upgrades in the past month? If you have gotten your tech license, which is a little hard right now, it, there is ways that you can do, you can take a test to become a new tech. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, if you've upgraded um, or become a new tech or have taken a license, class or a license test online let us know I'm not seeing anybody in the chat I'm not I'm not really sure we're gonna have a lot of upgrades for new techs um, there is online testing I will uh, Cliff and I were were rapping about this before we started the stream here there is online testing hey Roland w0 RL you finally got it working that's great there is online testing, and if you search the YouTube um, archives, there is a bunch of YouTube tubers that have discussed online testing. It is tough to do. Uh, you have to meet a certain criteria. You have to sign up early and wait in line, but there are VEs that are doing online testing. So all I want to express to you is... Go online, do your research, and see which um, which organization works out for you. I believe if you go to ham uh, ham hamstudy.org is where you want to go and find the information on online testing. They have kind of defined the online testing platform, and they've got a lot of information on how to get your ham radio license online and take a test. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Do your research, and uh, there are methods on how you can get your, your radio license online. All right, any first-timers in the chat? Anybody new to SLSRC? This is your first meeting, your first time in the chat. Yeah, Bill, we had a new ham that checked in on, on Wednesday that got their tech license through online. Yep, that is correct. Hey, Robert. So if you're, um, 
Hey, Jeff, first SLSRC meeting. Thank you for attending. Appreciate it. So if you're new to SLSRC or this is your first meeting, just uh, call it out in the chat and we'll, we'll call your name out. Thanks for being here, though. Appreciate it. We live in weird times now, and uh, this is the best we can do. We would do a Zoom meeting, but um, this is just much easier to stream the, the meeting and the presentation over, um, over YouTube. All right, moving on to silent keys. So I know Bill Wheeler, K0DEW, he passed away last week, became a silent key. We did not get any funeral arrangements for Bill as he was not a member and he had not been, he, he wasn't a current member, he had not been a member for four or five years, um, but wanted to pass this on that Bill Wheeler, K0DEW, became a silent key. Is there any other silent keys? Hey, Christian. Is there any other silent keys that we want to recognize? If there are, please put them in the chat and uh, call them out as a silent key, and we will announce them to the membership. Anyone? I hope there's not any. All right. Moving on, um, I had communication to the ham radio community, and I forgot what that was for. But we're gonna we're gonna go over here and take a look at the Chrome window, and you know, bring my window over here. Did you know that we have a website? So this is the St. Louis and Sur Suburban Radio Club website. It doesn't look like this. This is usually one ribbon bar. But um, if you need to know anything about club-related material, events, things that uh, are canceled, any updates that we have, please go out to our website and take a look at the website. That's where you're going to get all the information, all the upda updated information that, um, that the club is, is communicating to the membership. We also have a mailing list if you come all the way down here this mailing list right here you can sign up first name last name put in your call sign if you have one you don't have to be a member of SLSRC to sign up for our mailing list and you do not have to be a ham radio operator um, put your email list and hit the sign up button and it will go to our secretary and he will put you on the list that is for getting all the updates that uh, SLSRC has, and we also send out uh, updates about um, bike rides and other events uh, through that mailing list. We also have some social media, so I want to show you our, here is our Facebook page, so you can follow our Facebook page, like and subscribe for this, and then also uh, we have a Twitter so here's our Twitter account. It's um, at SLSRC, if you want to follow us on Twitter. And then our YouTube channel, obviously you're here. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, and uh, you'll be notified on, on all of our uh, upcoming YouTube videos that we have. And then also I wanted to, to show the STL Hams Facebook page. If you're not part of the STL Hams page, it's a really good resource for everything ham radio in St. Louis. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Any questions on that? Looking here through the chat. Staying safe and staying indoors. All right. What we'll do, we're 27 minutes into this. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go through some abbreviated uh, things that we need to cover. And as people uh, come back online and uh, stream, they'll uh, transition to, to Dale here. So the SLSRC breakfasts have been canceled. Breakfast have been canceled for the month of May. Just wanted to make sure everyone knew that uh, we might resume them in June. So we will... Um, We'll take a look. MS Bike, that is the annual uh, 
bike event, September 12th and 13th. Rebecca is taking signups for that. So if you want to uh, donate and volunteer your time during that weekend, it's a great event. See Rebecca or email me at um, info at slsrc.org and we'll get you the right information. Tour de Cure has been canceled. That was a bike race in June. I know that a lot of members uh, help participate in that. That has been canceled. And then uh, looking here at the chat, is there anything that um, that we missed? Anybody in the chat? Anybody online? No? Okay. Um. I was going to mention and, and pull a website up here, but the ARL, I don't know that everyone knows this, but the ARL with your 45 or $49 for your yearly fee, you actually get QST on the air. So QST is a magazine. On the air is a magazine geared towards new hams. You get that for free. The National Contesting Journal and QEX, that is geared towards experimental uh, hams, and that is all free. You can you can see all of those free if you go to the internet. You log into your ARL account, or if you download the Google Play or Apple app, just search for ARL, and you can look at all of the previous epi- episodes, um, all the previous um, periodicals. For QST, On the Air, National Contesting Journal, and QEX. So I just wanted to say a blurb about that. Um, I think that's about it. All right, moving on to Paul. You are up. Let me get you up in the frame here. Well, I didn't want to do that. Let me get you up in the frame. Say something. And it's a pretty simple process. It's a one a two-page document to fill out. Uh, fill it out, email it in to uh, Rebecca, and her uh, email address is shown there on the information. Uh, the equipment is a uh, ICOM 725 and an Ashton power supply, as I recall, uh, for the equipment, and then also uh, a Yezu uh, two-meter rig. There are two separate grants that will be managed. Uh, the grant application process closes on April 30 at midnight. So I uh, encourage everybody that has interest in that equipment to go ahead and uh, submit the grants. With that, uh, Kyle, I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Paul. Uh, I, I had your audio off there. Uh, Paul was talking about the grants. Just say your first two sentences again. Sorry, Paul. Oh, okay. Just wanted to say hello to everybody and to encourage folks to take a look at the SLSRC grant program to uh, get some equipment. Uh, that was donated to the to the club by a silent key with the provision that it go to a a uh, ham that was uh, newer and interested in uh, growing in the hobby. Okay, thank you. All right, Rebecca, you're up. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just here to give you the latest financial report from the club. We currently have fourteen thousand three hundred three ninety six in our checking account. 2,998.71 in PayPal, 25,731.46 in our insurance CD fund, and 9,024 in our education fund, totaling $52,058.13. We are currently getting started on planning Winterfest. So if you would like to join us, please contact me at kc9cij at slsrc.org or info at slsrc.org, and we will get you added to our committee um, and helping with planning of all of that. Okay. But so far, so good. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, Bill, you're up. Well, hello, folks. I'm going to give you some updates. So we are still continuing our stuck-at-home net. Uh, that will continue until further notice based on the fact that we are still isolating but thus far, since we started this, we are averaging 16.4 hams. Uh, the last four nets that we did that were strictly the stuck-at-home net, we had 14 people at each one of those. Uh, again, it's extended until further notice. We will get it out once we shut it down. 
but we're going to keep going right now since we're still isolated. Um, talking about our poker run. So the poker run was this past Saturday. It was on five of our repeaters. We had 21 total participants, and I would like to congratulate K9SHY, Kilo 9, Sierra Hotel Yankee. That's Stephen from Belleville, Illinois. He won the poker hand with a three of a kind. He had six of hearts, six of diamonds, and a six of clubs, which was the winning hand. We are looking at possible other radio games to play that are kind of outside the box, and we're real close to having a Scrabble game figured out that we will do. Details will come with that as how we're going to do that. We're also contemplating other things like Boggle or a scavenger hunt where we combine uh, what three words with the radio. So we'll let you know what type of things we come up with. We're just trying to think outside of the box and have some fun with radio while we have more time to be on it. Membership current count, uh, let's see, is 233 total members. And I am in the process of starting to email previous members who have not joined for 2020. So you may or may not get an email from me about that. And finally, I want to talk about programs, our upcoming programs. So we'll talk about Dale in a second. But in May, we're going to have Bill Cowley. And he's going to show us how to add a pan adapter to your older radio. That's going to be uh, May 22nd. Field day, we're still in the, you know, planning stages and trying to figure out what's going to happen with that. The ARRL has addressed possible alternatives, but we'll see if we're still isolating or not. And then in July, we've got scheduled on July 24th, Tools of the Ham Radio Trade with George Waddell, W0GRW. And uh, like I said, this one today is the thrill of Moore's Code, and you're going to meet Dale Holloway here shortly. And that's all I got for you, folks. I'll turn it back over to Kyle. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, and Cliff, do you want to come in and give an update on education? Let me get your lower third here, and you're off in the, to the running. Okay, am I live here? You're live. Can you hear me? Well, this is a save the date for the May the 1st, which is a week from tonight. Uh, the mentoring workshop, this is the second session. It runs April through September, and then, of course, October through March is the Back to Basics, where there is a program and a presentation each session. But the mentoring workshop, there's no agenda, you, you, and it's going to be on the 8-5 repeater at 7 o'clock, just like the meeting would be if we were at the hospital. And if you have a question about your radio or what radio you should buy or what antenna you should buy or coax or whatever, that's the time to ask the question. And there'll be information going out probably Monday or Tuesday and again Friday. And it'll be on the uh, website also in social media. And as everybody knows, we were talking about classes from uh, technician, general and extra. In, in March, they got canceled. Uh, the ones for general are canceled. And we're hoping, with our fingers crossed, that June 4th, 5th and 6th, we'll be able to hold the extra class. That's the one that we're focusing on right now. And we'll plan the uh, technician in general sometimes later, late summer, early fall. We don't know yet. But uh, those of you that are studying for the extra, I think there was six or seven on the list. Uh, keep studying. We hope we can get in there. That's it, Kyle. That's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Cliff. Appreciate it. Let me bring it back to me. Thanks, Cliff. Yep. All I'm right. out of here. Yep. See you later. All right. Uh, I've got engineering. And website and field day, just real quick, um, kind of everything on the engineering front has been put on hold because of the, the virus, and uh, we're going to get back into the swing of it during the summer, hopefully build out our Arden network, and going to be working with the Aries group here in St. Louis to uh, help build that out. Website, I really don't have an update on the website, uh, it just uh, keeps chugging along, go out there and take a look at it, sign up for the mailing list. Field day, we're looking for radio captains. Also, uh, we're looking at alternative operating positions or setup due to the uh, human malware virus that's going around. Mark, AE0ME, is heading up our field day uh, committee. So if you have any questions or want to become a field captain or radio captain or have any ideas for Mark, email him at fieldday at slsrc.org 
or you can email the club at info at slsrc.org and we will get you that inform or get your information to Mark. But uh, Mark A E zero M E is heading up our field day f- this year. It's going to be interesting on what happens uh, between now and the end of June. A uh, little blurb about contests. I'm not going to take long. Uh, upcoming contest. April 25th is the Florida Cuso party. A big one, the 2nd of May, is Indiana, Delaware, and 7th Area Cuso Party. These are good for getting worked all states. 7th Area is Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, um, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Arizona. Those are some hard states to get, so if you're working towards your worked all states, getting on the the air May 2nd is a good time to, to make some contacts. The, everyone knows that Hamvention was canceled this year, but there is a Hamvention QSO party. It is May 16th. I believe it runs from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, so that's something to do. And then uh, had some uh, de-expeditions that are going on. Ghana, Cambodia, uh, Brunelli, the Maldives, and Guernsey are all in the air during the months of April and May. If you go to ng 3 k.com november golf three kilo.com you'll find that website has all the information on uh on d expeditions also wanted to tell everyone that contest university is free this year it is usually it runs the thursday before dayton since dayton or since hamvention is canceled they have decided to uh, stream Contest University free for the day. And they have select presentations that they're going to do. It's the Thursday before. It starts around 8 a.m., maybe even 9 a.m. Go out to Contest University's website. If you just Google Contest University, it'll get all the information. I believe that they are going to uh, start posting the Zoom link. They're going to use Zoom the Zoom link here in a couple of weeks uh, where you can register and, and join. Other than that, that's all I had. Is there any announcements? I see that we've got 51 people streaming. Thanks for coming back. I took a lightning hit. My computer froze, and and then I tried to get the stream back, and it crashed. So here we are with a new stream. I'm glad everyone can could uh, come back. Any general announcements for things that... We needed to talk about. I'm going to let this run for a second here until we bring Dale in. I'm not seeing anything. So, Dale, if you want to start your 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 presentation on your screen, I will give you an inter- introduction, and we will go from there. So tonight present, presenting is Dale F- K4EQ. He's presenting on the thrill of CW. I cannot wait for this this presentation because I am in the process of learning CW. Dale was raised in Michigan and licensed as a novice in 1960 as Kilo November 8, November, I'm sorry, Whiskey Hotel Bravo due to miscellaneous moves around the country. Dale held the previous call signs of K8WHB, W9NXD, and NJX, I'm sorry, NJ8X. When the new vanity call sign program came out in 1996, Dale was in Virginia and elected to change his current to his current call sign, K4EQ. Dale has visited and lived in many areas of the world and has operated ham radio all over. He's transmitted from Costa Rica, Honduras, Russia, and Canada. His primary interests in amateur radio and uh, CW and QRP. Dale enjoys building several radios, uh, QRP kits, and also operates uh, them on the air. And that's the introduction I got for Dale. So, Dale, if you want to take your your microphone off mute... Okay. There you go. I think I'm on the wrong screen again. No, we can see your your presentation now. You can. Yes. Okay. 
All right. Well, I'm seeing it on a different screen. So, all right. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm sorry about all these issues tonight. Uh, this is my fault here. I'm not too uh, good at this, I guess. But I've been looking forward to this for several weeks now. Uh, back in December sometime, I think it was, that one of the questions on our Tuesday night net was uh, what people would like for a program or something like that. And there were several that mentioned uh, something about CW. And uh, I emailed uh, Bill right away and said, I'd be happy to do something. And he said, fine. And uh, I put something together. And hopefully this will be some help tonight. This is not a uh, how-to on everything, but I think that it will be helpful. Uh, really what I want us to do is learn how to become good CW operators and have a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with it through the years as I'll be sharing. And uh, I think that some of our new hams especially will uh, enjoy getting into it as well. Um, let's see here. Oh, what's going on here? All right. Well, I'll do it this way then. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I've been uh, working on CW since I was a novice in 1960, and uh, I've had some good experiences doing it. My primary interest is CW and QRP, but I do some contesting and DXing as well. And I was fortunate uh, to uh, uh, win some contests, and I put some of those up here. The one I'm most proud of is when we were living in Honduras was to... Uh, in the uh, 1984 AWRL DX contest to be first place in the world for um, 80 meters CW. Um, these are some of my keys, and these three right here were made by Larry Nauman, uh, N0SA, right here in St. Louis. And this upper left one is my, uh, my definitely my very favorite key uh, that I have. Um, my goals tonight are, number one, to inspire new hams to learn the Morse code. We've got a lot of new hams in our club, thanks to Cliff and his team of uh, people. And uh, several have expressed interest in learning the code, and several of you already have done that. And I hope to inspire more of you to do that, to uh, get involved with it. It's not for everybody, but it uh, is for a lot of people. I want to encourage all of us to improve our skills in Morse code. Uh, I've been doing it a long time. And I know some of you have as well. And uh, we still all have room for improvement, I believe. And then, like I said earlier, I want us just simply to discover the fun of communicating the Morse code. I'm sorry I'm looking not at the camera, but my I can't switch the screen for some reason. Um, a caveat here. Nothing I share tonight is from Part 97 of the SEC rules governing the amateur radio service. And what that means simply is that what I say regarding CW procedures tonight is based on my opinion uh, and my experience. And many of you who are experienced operators may have valid differing opinions tonight, and I'm good with that. And uh, right now I can't see the chat because of uh, this way the switch, so I can't see if anybody's making a comment. Uh, Kyle, if you see something I need to respond to, just go ahead and uh, break in and let me know. I will. But Okay, thanks. And as a CW operator, every one of you will develop your own operating style. So what I share tonight uh, are, in my opinion, generally accepted as good uh, operating practices uh, for CW. Again, it's, it's my opinion, and, and you may differ. Um, I want to give you a quick overview of the requirement for the uh, for uh, CW for in the United States for a ham license. Uh, prior to 1961, and that varied a little bit through the years too. Prior to 1951, there were three classes of amateur licenses. There was the class A, B, and C. In 51, there was a major restructuring into six license classes: novice, tech, general, conditional, advanced, and extra. For those of you who haven't been around long enough, uh, the novice was a very easy exam. It was five words a minute code and a very simple 25 question uh, multiple choice exam. I was When I was doing this, I found my old 1960 uh, license manual here and I looked at the questions and they're really simple. Ohm's law and uh, rules and regulations, it was very easy. The conditional was the same as the general, had the same test, had the same operating privileges, but it was taken uh, by actually a volunteer examiner. Any general class that was 21 years of, of age and older uh, and held a general class could uh, administer the exam. So you sent for it in the mail. 
it was conditioned in that uh, it could be you could be retested at any time. I don't know if anybody ever was, but you could be. Uh, and uh, later, uh, it was it was grandfathered into the general class. The advanced uh, was quite an advanced exam, and then the the the, the, the extra, of course, was uh, much more difficult as it is today. Uh, and that had the 20 word per minute code requirement. In 1977, they eliminated the sending requirement. We always had to send. First of all, when you went to an FCEC exam a session, uh, you you had to receive uh, five words. They sent five words, five minutes uh, of code, and you had to copy one minute solid someplace in that five minutes to pass. And if you pass that, then you had to send on a straight key. And believe it or not, uh, when I took the uh, general exam in 1961 for the first time, <laughs> um, there was an elderly gentleman. Of course, at my age, everybody over 35 was elderly, but he was an older man. He sent so poorly that the examiner actually failed him, and I felt uh, terribly sorry for him. So anyway, the sending requirement was eliminated. And then in 1991, the code was eliminated for the technician class. You can see a pattern here. Uh, in, in 2000, it was restructured as we know it today with the tech, the general, and the advanced, or the uh, extra. And uh, the code speed was reduced to five words a minute. That generated a lot of excitement in the amateur ranks, particularly with uh, old timers. And then in uh, 2007, the code was eliminated altogether. And there were reasons for that. That created a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of hundreds of letters to the uh, editors of different ham, uh, uh, magazines. Um, and there are a lot of people who still are upset about that today because the uh, AWRL supported that uh, el uh, elimination. So that's sort of a history of the uh, Morse code in the States. Now, if we were able to meet in person, I, this is where I would like to have had a little bit of discussion and, and some other points too, but uh, what do you think of when you hear the word code? And I don't mean Morse code, but just the word in general. To eliminate the discussion, I'll just move forward. I think of the word uh, secret. Uh, when I hear somebody talk about a code, it's a secret because you have to have uh, a means to decode that and not everybody has that. And so even as a little child, I got excited when I heard the word code. And especially, whoops, let me back up there. In 19, um, uh, uh, well, I got to back up. Here we go. 1955, when I was eight years old, my parents gave me for Christmas this Western Union Telegraph signal set. Not this very one, but it was exactly like this. And it was so exciting because you could send Morse code back and forth if you had two of them to another person. And it buzzed, it blinked, and it uh, clicked. And you could read the Morse code on the side. You couldn't, didn't have to learn it. But it was so exciting because it was a secret between myself and my little sister. And then about the next year, I started listening to Captain Midnight on the radio. And if you remember Captain Midnight, you're old like me. But he had a secret squadron. He flew all over the world and saved the world. And he had a secret squadron that you could join. And you got a manual just like this one and a code decoder. And he would send codes to us on the... Uh, on the radio and we would decode them with the decoder. That was exciting to me. And then in the next year or two, uh, I talked my parents into letting me move our old upright AM shortwave uh, radio into the uh, into my bedroom. And uh, I would listen to broadcast stations all over the world. And then one day I came upon these people who were talking to each other. They were ham radio operators. And then I wanted you to hear this too. Uh, let me see, I'll turn this up here. I started hearing this. I don't know if you hear that or not, but that is, uh, as I'm sure you know, if you heard it, that's CW, but it's being received on a uh, AM receiver and uh, because it doesn't have a BFO. And whenever I hear that to this day, I get very nostalgic uh, hearing that CW come through on an AM receiver. Uh, and so... Uh, this is sort of my beginnings with the whole code thing, and it was exciting to me. And then we moved to from Lansing, Michigan, to Grand Rapids uh, between my sixth and seventh grade. And I discovered a young ham who was in high school, lived across the street. He'd been licensed for a couple of years, KUDM. And I, I started spending every day of the summer over to his house. 
and he taught me uh, elementary theory and code. And finally, one day, guess what happened? I learned the code, and I was so excited. And I sent for my novice exam, which is what you had to do. And it was, I guess, it was sent to the uh, whoops to the person that uh, you designated. Well, my goodness, here. And uh, finally, on September 29, 1960 the FCC issued me my license, my novice license. And that was the beginning of a very exciting and fun-filled adventure that I've had with Morse code that continues to this, to this very day. Now, a question I often hear is, what is the best way to learn the Morse code? And I have a very pat answer that I give when I'm asked that question. I don't know. I really don't know the best way to learn it. Uh, but what I do know is that different people learn differently. That's in all aspects of life, and it's no different with the Morse code. My opinion, though, is that we tend to make learning the code a little bit too methodical. Now, I could be wrong, and even what I'm going to share is, I guess, could be called a method. But uh, it's not as complicated sometimes as I think we tend to make it. Here's a question. What method did you use to learn English? You didn't really have, if that's your first language, you didn't really have a method. You just, by osmosis, you were around it and you began to learn the code. I think we need to think of the code as an art form and just simply let it be music to our ears. It's something that's beautiful, something we love to hear and we pick it up and we sing it or key it in Morse code. To me, learning the code is similar to learning a new language. Uh, years ago, my wife and I, well, our whole family, we moved to Costa Rica for a year where my wife and I were in language school at the Spanish Language Institute. And um, that was it was a total immersion program. Everything in class was in Spanish from day one. I can remember in our very first class, one of the classes that we had was called Lenguaje Activo. It's a conversation class. And the teacher went up to the... Um, to the window and she began to motion through the window and said, por la ventana, por la ventana. I knew what la was, it was the, and I assumed then she was talking about the window and pretty soon you got the idea she was talking about by the window or through the window. And, and, and to learn the language, I discovered that you really had to see it, you had to hear it, you had to feel it, you had to say it, you had to think it, you had to do it. If we went to get groceries at the grocery store, if you didn't recognize the label, you had to learn the word. And code is a little bit that way. We learn by osmosis. Now here's how I learned the Morse code characters. It may not work for you, but it worked for me. I didn't learn them as dots and dashes, although they were, and our mind will tell us that's what they are. But I learned them as unique sounds. For example, a V is not dot, 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 dash, but it's a sound. I hope you can hear that. It's as loud as I can get that. Yeah, we're good, Dale. Good. It's just a sound, and I began to recognize the sound. And then Jim, who was teaching me the code, he would send some random text or maybe pick up a QST and start sending from there. And as I learned a letter, he would have me pick them out. So for example, he may send the word save. Whoops, I'm sorry. Ah, there's the V, there's that sound. And so I learned to hear the sound. And then once I learned that letter and I could pick it out of his text, then he would add another letter, maybe the A. So he go to S, A. Ah, there it is, the sound in the V. Or the four. So I, I learned the sound, and I think that was a great way to learn. At least it was for me. Here's some helps in learning the International Morse Code, is, which is what we use today. And by the way, I put in parentheses there, Continental Code, because that's what it really is called as well. In fact, on my, uh, my very first, my only, <laughs> code proficiency certificate that I got back in the early 60s from the AWRL, it says that it tests your proficiency in the Continental Code. So that's really the name of what we, we use today. Here's some helps. I'm really trying to rush through this because I know we're pushed for time tonight. CW Ops, there are many of you who are involved in CW Ops, uh, you've told me. And it, uh, I've, I've not been involved, it wasn't around when I learned the code. 
but it appears it's an excellent program. And uh, uh, if we had time, if we were able to be together and discuss this, I'd like several of you to share a little bit about that. Uh, but it's a great way to learn the code and to improve the code, and I would uh, highly recommend that. Uh, they use the Farnsworth method, and so, which is sending at 20 words a minute. You say, well, that's awful fast to learn, but what you do is just space out the characters. And so instead of uh, my call sign at 20 words a minute, you just space out the characters, K, and then a four, then an E. So that's the Farnsworth method. And then one I hadn't heard of until last night, I was, uh, after uh, we tested this, Kyle was telling me about the Long Island CW Club, and I looked up their website today. Kyle uh, is taking some uh, classes, I guess, with them. But uh, they, they look like they have an excellent program as well. You could look that up on the uh, website and see what they have to offer. And then here's another one, read road signs. When I was learning the code, <clears throat> when my mom and dad would take me any place in the car, every time I would come up on a sign, I would do it in my mind. We'd come up to a stop sign, and in my head, I'm going, da 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 And believe it or not, to this day, I do the very same thing. We're really, it's really neat here in, in Missouri, and uh, we've lived in Missouri about seven years now, two years here in the St. Louis area. But our license plates in the cars begin with two letters and a number. And what I do every time I come up behind a car, I do two things. First of all, I associate that license plate with the DXCC country. So if the license plate begins with CO2, I'm thinking that's Cuba. And the second thing I do is go da 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 da. I'm doing code. And I see I see other signs, McDonald's, Wendy's, or whatever, and I'm doing code in my mind. I'm reading code signs or road signs whenever I go out go out on the road. There's a, uh, the Fist CW Radio Club has an excellent program, the Code Buddy program. And you can sign up with a Code Buddy and get on the air and chat back and forth. I recommend that. Now, finally, just practice. You have to practice. That's all I want to say about learning code because everybody learns differently. But here's what I want to talk about more tonight. How to become a good CW operator and have a lot of fun doing it. Have successful contacts. You know, one of the things that always frustrates me about new software is there's always that long learning curve. And when I'm going through that learning curve, it's never a lot of fun. But once I learn, it, go through the curve and learn it, then that program is a lot of fun. And CW operating on the air is the same way. It can be frustrating if you don't know the method to do it. Here's some things that you need to do, I believe, to become a good operator on, on the air. First of all, learn some common abbreviations. What I've got on the screen here are abbreviations that in, in one month's time, if you have a few contacts, you're likely to use every one of these. Um, and I think they're maybe self-explanatory. I don't know if I need to go through all of them or not. But one uh, that you'll use a lot is ES for and, and uh, uh, your, you are, um, I use, I think in a month's time, I would use every one of these. How, let me give an example here too, how they're used. Thanks for your fine business weather report. Every one of those is abbreviated. That's common as can be. Do you have to use these on, when you're in a QSO? No, you don't. But it's a good idea to, knew, to know them because the person that you're chatting with probably is going to use them and you want to know what they're saying. So thanks is a very common one. Oh, I want to back up on that too, because one I want to mention here, <laughs> thanks uh, it is it, most US hams use TNX. A lot of European and other parts of the world, they use TKS uh, for thanks. Either one is acceptable. Uh, normally I use TNX. Uh, if you want to sound like a novice, if you want to sound like a newbie, a neophyte, whatever you want to call it, uh, use THX, but don't use it. <laughs> that came in with texting. And I think to a lot of uh, old, uh, old time hams, it's kind of like saying 10-4 uh, uh, good buddy. Uh, TNX is the common one here in the States. Learn some pro signs. Pro signs, uh, we, we identify as two characters, but they're sent as one. For example, AR uh, is, is sent as one character. 
or break. It's all one character. Let's talk about these a little bit here. AR is one that I hear misused a lot. Is there a law against misusing it? No, but it's nice to know the proper way to use it. AR is used at the end of a transmission when you're in a QSO with somebody before the call signs. It can also be used at the end of CQ. So you're calling CQ, CQ, DE, K4, EQ, or whatever you call. You can say just K, which is all I use, or you could say AR. AR, K together, you'll hear a lot. It's kind of redundant, I think, uh, one or the other. But you use it before the uh, call sign, uh, the AR. And at the end, uh, you use your K or KN, which means you don't want anybody else to join the conversation. That's rarely used, but I've heard it. I may even have used it at some point. Here's an example. You're in a QSO with somebody, and uh, you're at the end of what you're saying. You want to turn it over to the next station. And so I say, how copy, Bob? Question mark. There's the AR and then the call signs. So the AR means I'm done transmitting. Now the call signs. And then I turn it over with K or KN. So it's just a simple procedure there. Uh, very common and good to know. SK is like AR, but it's used at the end of your last transmission before you give the call signs, just like you do AR. So uh, here's an example. 73 Dolores, see you later. There's that abbreviation. Then the call signs. And I would generally end it TU to thank you. And DIT, dit is used a lot. Uh, it's just a take on the old shave and a haircut, two bits, and just send the two bits, and the other guy might come back and do the same thing or just a dit, a single dit. But those are real common and good to know what's going on. R is the voice, or the uh, code equivalent of the voice Roger. You send, send an R. And on CW, it's used at the beginning of your transmission if and only if you correctly copied the other person's transmission. Here's what I mean. I'm talking to Kyle on, okay, on CW. He's, he's, he's turned it back to me now. He's had his transmission. He sends AA0Z from, well, I guess I'm sending that. I'm sorry. I'm sending it to Kyle. AA0Z, DE from K4EQ. Usually I send it a couple times. I've heard him send it three or four times. Roger, Roger. Find business on your new Elecraft KX3. So the R means you copied what he said on the previous transmission. Here's how not to use it. A0Z from K4EQ. Roger, Roger. Please repeat the model of your Elecraft. Hmm. Why would you send Roger, meaning you copied it all, and then ask a question about what he said? So it's a, it's a good uh, pro sign to use properly. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Uh, Richard has a question. What, do, what does TT in CW abbreviation mean? What is it again? TT, Tom, uh, Tom, Tom. Oh, that, 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 T-H-A-T. T-H-A-T. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Were there any questions on the other abbreviations? No, not yet. Um, okay. if, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat, and we will. Uh, I'll uh, politely interrupt Dale on this awesome, t awesome topic, and uh, we will uh, get them answered. Yeah, I'm really r rushing through here because I I know that uh, we were delayed tonight. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, any questions? That's that's why we're doing this. I'm sorry again. I'm not looking at the camera here. I got the wrong screen up. Um, I can fix that. Yeah, no worries, Dale. Your um, uh, your video is very small in the window, so um, it's not like, okay. It's not like they're tracking your eyes, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, as this is a common one too. It's used when you're having a transmit, and it sounds like this. 
You use that in a transmission when you want the other operator to wait for a minute. And you don't follow it with any other characters. Here's the example. Sorry, Cliff, I spilled my coffee again. Usually you send it twice so they know exactly what you're talking about. You want to wait. And probably the other guy will come back. Yeah, Roger, <laughs> you know, he understands. Um, and usually, if if I'm able to, if I haven't, don't have to run somewhere, I'll try to send it every 10 or 15 seconds uh, just to let them know that I'm still there. So AS, you'll hear that often. Well, maybe not often, but occasionally. And uh, it's good to know. You don't have to explain. In fact, you wouldn't even, typically, you wouldn't say, sorry, I spilled my coffee because you got to do something. You just send AS right away. I don't know why I put that in there. BT, this is a common one. Da, 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 da. The typical use of it is as a separator between the sentences. You use it in place of all the punctuation except the question mark. Uh, the question mark is needed for obvious reasons, but you, you don't generally send uh, periods or commas. You can, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, it's, it's often used just for, normally used just for that. And sometimes when you're thinking, uh, you want to respond to something you, or think of something to say, and you might just go, oops, Don did it. So it's a, you'll hear that a lot on CW. Here's an example of its use. Thanks for the weather report, Bill. Now I'm going to another sentence. The weather here is also hot. Common. You're going to use that a lot in a QSO. Break. This is a pro sign that's used primarily for short transmissions when you want the other person to transmit. So you, instead of sending, you know, I'm turning it back to, to, to Kyle, uh, KA0Z from K4EQ, going through that whole thing, just say break. Now, it's sent as one character. Theoretically, but I guarantee you that 99% of the operators today send it as two characters. Like that. Da 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 da. CW code is like a language. Language is dynamic. And that means it constantly changes. Words cha have meaning changes, and code is no different. And technically, it's but 99% of everybody sends it. So don't feel bad about doing that. In fact, I finally broke down last year and that's what I do. Here's an example, W0FY from K4EQ. Roger, Roger, whoops, mercy. Roger, Roger, fine business, Joe. What was your first call sign? Well, Okay, what was your first call sign? Break. I don't want to go through the whole thing. W0FY from K4EQ again. And then he's just going to say it was, you know, whatever. And back to me again. Yeah. Okay. Dale, um, Richard yeah. asks, I thought BK meant back to you. It, it does mean back. It, 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 BTU means back to you. BK can mean break. Or it can mean back, but I wouldn't send that because of it, the way you use it uh, to turn it back to the other person. What what, um, what would you use to turn it back over to the to the other person? This one. B BK. 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 Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You can send it as one, which it technically is, or two, like I just did it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Keep them coming because, like I said, I'm going quickly and I'm probably missing a lot of things here. Uh, Richard also has just a quick question. Would it be appropriate to mention the uh, W1AW on the air CW training sessions? Sure. Yeah. Uh, they have Morse code five days a week, I believe it is. And I know on 40 meters, they're on uh, 70, 40, 7.07, 7 7.47.5, I think, 7047.5. Somebody can correct me on that if it's wrong. And But if you have QST or go on to ARRL site, they have their schedule there and the frequencies. 
and they always have a strong signal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good questions. Keep them coming. It's good practice. Um, learn some common cue signals because they're going to be used and um, uh, you need to use them occasionally as well. QRL question mark, especially, which means you're asking if the frequency is in use. And you should, and I'm going to come to that in a moment, but you should always do that before you begin transmitting a, a, Q, a CQ. These are common ones here. I'll let you look them up, uh, uh, but I'll explain QRL here in a minute. This may sound silly, but I think to have a good contact on CW, you need a comfortable operating position. Have a comfortable chair. I have a fairly comfortable one, even though it's almost 20 years old. Uh, but it's helpful. And and have room for your arm on the desk so you can rest your arm on that. Otherwise, you can get very tiring, particularly if you use a straight key. And uh, arrange your equipment for easy access. And that's kind of general anyway, not just CW. Don't worry about your speed. I know everybody wants to increase their speed, myself included. But the fist CW Club has a saying, accuracy transcends speed. And I think that is a great thing to remember. It's far better if you're going to be a good operator to be accurate than it is to be fast. I think you should send at a comfortable speed and don't send faster than you can copy, particularly if you send CQ, because somebody will come back at that faster speed. And if you can't copy it, you're in trouble. Now, it's not a bad idea to push yourself to go a little bit beyond your ability to, to, to get faster. But accuracy transcends speed always, in my opinion. Um, I had that swirl because it's so important. Your goal as a CW operator should always be to become a better operator, not a speed demon. If you can become a speed demon that's incredible, but but your focus should be on becoming a better operator. And the better operator you become on CW, the faster you'll be able to send and receive, I guarantee. Don't be ashamed to write down your copy. There's a big thing about copying in your head. Uh, I hear that talked about a lot, and I think that's great. And at faster speeds, you really don't have any choice unless you're a super speedy uh, typist, which I am not. I'm lucky to hit the right key, let alone do it quickly. And you can only write uh, in pen and pencil uh, so fast. Uh, but So don't be afraid to write down your copy. I do that a lot, particularly when somebody has a long cue so and there are things that I want to respond to. Uh, maybe it's my age, maybe it's just my, uh, my <laughs> intellect, but I tend to forget and uh, so I have to jot down notes while they're, they're sending to me, just d jot down some notes so I remember what it is that I wanted, uh, wanted to respond to when, it, uh, when he turns it back to me. So, Dale, you, now, don't, you don't copy down every letter or every word. You just do some notes. That's correct. That's correct. Um, and each to his own. If you can, if you want to copy everything, you can do it. But again, as you get faster, of course, that's pretty uh, difficult to do. Now, uh, be, to become a good operator, that's what we're talking about now, and have fun doing it. You need to check the frequency with QRL question mark before you call CQ. It used to be, and I put it on here. It used to be, we said, did it did. That's how we checked the frequency years ago. I haven't heard that in years. I don't think anybody would know anymore, but that was how we'd check the frequency and somebody would come back and maybe just did or something. Um, but the reason you want to listen first is because obviously there may be a cue still going on. You want to hear one side of it. And so you want to make sure. Um, and I'll come, I'm going to come back to that too. Leave sufficient spacing between your characters and your words. Um, I don't know how many times I've heard, uh, well, CQ sent as one character. Somebody trying to be real fast. That's not cool. Leave a space. And I don't know how many times I hear, uh, let's say the word character. Oops. Ah, I can't even send it in front of you guys. That's too fast a character. Leave some spacing. 
So, you know, the faster you go, I mean, obviously the spacing is going to be uh, uh, more minimal, but but leave enough spacing so you can understand what they're saying. Guys that run it together, it's just it's very difficult to copy. Uh, call in CQ. Okay. You're finally, you're finally, you've learned the code and maybe you had a QSO with somebody, but you haven't called CQ. Uh, it's pretty intimidating the first time you do that. I can remember uh, when I first called CQ. First thing to do is what we just talked about. Listen to make sure the frequency is clear. And if you don't hear anybody, then send QRL question mark once. And if you don't hear anybody after five seconds or so, call it again. If you don't hear anybody after about five seconds and no one responds, start calling CQ. So always check the frequency first. Keep your CQs short. Uh, many hands prefer the five by three method. And here's the example. CQ, 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 D, E, K, zero, H, H, B. Hi, Tom, if you're still there, three times. So five CQs, three uh, call signs, and then a simple K. You don't need a, you don't need the A, R, K, one or the other, preferably just the K. I can remember when I was a novice, there was another novice station calling CQ that literally sent CQ just CQ for two minutes solid. No call sign, just CQ for two minutes. You know, who's going to come back to that? Uh, <laughs> That's great. Nobody. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, five by three is a great CQ. I personally prefer a, two, a four by two. I, I usually send a four by two. Uh, four CQs and my call sign twice. And then if nobody answers after about 10 seconds, I call again. And nobody answers after 10 seconds, I call again. Uh, but there's no rule about CQing, okay? Uh, you find the method that fits you best, but I do recommend you tend to keep them fairly short. So five by three is a great way to go. Okay, here's a real intimidating part, and this is your very first Q cell on CW. Um, that can be scary. It should include three items, the signal report for the other station, your QTH, where you live, and your name. That's all your first transmission needs to have. You can add something else if you would like. There's nothing wrong with that. But it should include those three things. The person wants to know. The other person wants to know how strong he's getting into your place. And he'd like to know your name and where you live. Here's an example. You've called CQ, and W1AW answers your CQ. After you pick yourself up off the floor because the ARRL just came back to you, what do you do? Okay, you've called CQ, W1AW has called you. You go back to W1AW, W1AW from KH2OP, or whatever your call sign is. Good morning, and thanks for the call. You don't have to say that, but that's a good beginning. Um, all abbreviations there. Good morning and thanks for the call. And then your, your spacer. Da, 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 da. Your RST, 579. 579, twice. And QTH, Baldwin, Missouri. Baldwin, Missouri. You can put a comma between the city and state if you'd like. And then your separator again, name, Charlie, Charlie. How copy, da 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 da. Then the call signs again, W1AW from KH2OP, K. And he'll come back to you, KH2OP from W1AW. And your QSO is underway and you go from there. Now, how copy is real common just before you give the AR on the call signs. But some people will just send how now in the question mark or simply how 
uh, if you a real proficient operator in the high speeds, I often hear just how, and I'll just send how, uh, meaning how copy. And instead of giving the call signs at the end, as we talked earlier, you might want to just give the break. It's, if it's a short uh, transmission or even that first transmission, you might just send break. Uh, either way is fine. And a lot of people, instead of name, use op for operator. Op is Dale. Op, Dale. The letter N is used for the number nine often. Uh, in contesting, always 599 would be, that would be 599 or 579. It's just very, very common. In fact, in contesting, you'll hear the for, an, uh, for a one. I mean, you, you keep things as short and brief as possible. But uh, the nine would be uh, right. typical where we at here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I did move through this quickly tonight. Here are some popular CW clubs that you you probably are already acquainted with. But uh, just a reminder, the Fist CW Club, uh, they have some good stuff. And uh, you can go to their website, fistna.org. And uh, they have uh, different contests or sprints that you can be involved in. So does the NAA, uh, NAACP, the, the North America QRP Century Club, I think, that, yeah, the CW Club, uh, NAQCC. They have a lot of uh, sprints uh, that uh, can be fun on CW, and um, I encourage you to get involved in those. And so does the Straight Key Century Club, SKCC. They have a lot of, uh, of sprints, and they collect numbers and whatnot. I'm a member. I really haven't done much with them. But uh, I would encourage you to um, to go to those websites and and be involved in those, those groups. Um, here's a look at my shack, where I am right now. Uh, if some of the stuff we talked about here, there's questions and uh, maybe the abbreviations and Q signs or whatever. Uh, I, after I... The first, when I first put this presentation together, it's been modified 110 times, I think, since. Um, uh, I, I wrote up an article and I put it on my website, k4eq.net. You can go to that. And if you click on the CW Tips tab, uh, this presentation is written up there. I haven't looked at it in weeks and weeks, so I don't know. It, it may be a little bit outdated, but I think that some of the information that, you, that I went over here very quickly, uh, you'll find there. So just go to k4eq.net. And by the way, I didn't take time tonight to um, talk about CW using CW uh, in in DXing um, and, and working DX and in contesting. And originally, I did. I eliminated like 20 si slides uh, to cut down the time on this. And it looks like we're ending just about the right time. But there are some unique things that you need to know about operating CW when you're working DX, some do's and don'ts on CW, and the same with contesting. And maybe somebody can uh, talk about those at another time. Um, but that's, um, that's what I have here tonight. Uh, remember the goal. The goal is to become a good CW operator and have bundles of fun doing it. I've had bundles of fun with CW for years, and I hope you guys do too. And uh, you guys who are just recently licensed, uh, get involved and give it a shot. It may not be your cup of tea, but uh, if it is, you will have a lifetime of fun with it. Okay, that's it, uh, Kyle. Very good. Uh, thank you. That was very interesting. Thank you, Dale. Um, does anybody have any questions for Dale? We're going to wait a few minutes here in the chat and see if there's any any questions that anyone has. Thanks, Bob and Pam. She's uh, They said, thank you. Great presentation, Dale. Thank you. I do have, uh, Christian says, thanks, Dale, 73, Christian, K0STH from uh, 100, you, 100 Watts in a Radio. Richard, great presentation. Jeff M., that was really cool. Jeff Hall, very good. 73, AE0ME. So that, that comment that you made, Dale, around sending as fast as you can, you can um, 
copy. Do you find that I know that you are you are a very proficient operator and send at at a very fast speed, but if I came back at 10 or 15 words a minute, you would slow down to and try and copy my speed so I could I could copy your CW, correct? Absolutely. I will always go back to the speed of the other operator. Um, I've, <laughs> I've had a couple code buddies before and, uh, they asked me to send it, uh, maybe 12 words a minute. And, uh, and I come back at 12 words a minute and, uh, they come back, they send a lot faster. So I try to match their speed then and they can't copy it. So, uh, I, I just always match what they're sending, not what they tell me they want me to send them. Gotcha. Is there, um, there's that Farnsworth, and then there's the Koch method also. Um, do you have any insight on um, – you? Le- did you learn the Farnsworth mes- method? Or, or uh, you learned kind of on your own, but uh, would you give any suggestions to young CW operators that are that is trying to learn CW? Is there one method that you prefer over the other? I have no preference. Uh the Farnsworth makes a lot of sense to me because you're sending it 20 words a minute. So that gives you a high speed start just spaced out. Uh, but I, I don't, I really don't know what's the best. Charlie Troxel KH2OP says, thanks Dale. What do I do with all the stations who heard you? I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, maybe he means QSL cards, Charlie, uh, Type back in the chat uh, a little bit more clarification on your yeah. your question there. I'm assuming maybe he he um, is talking about QSL cards. Is your information up to date on QRZ? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. We'll see if Charlie uh, comes back with a with an updated question here. So any other questions for Dale? If not, I think we're going to to wrap it up. Sorry, Dale, that we had uh, technical issues. Um, It seems like Sterling N0SSC got the same lightning strike that I did. And Mm -hmm. uh, he lives a couple of blocks uh, away from me, and it looks like uh, the lightning took both of our computers out, and that's why we locked up. So, um, yeah. All right. Very good. If no one has anything else... Um, I'm going to put both of the videos together and put them out on the website, and I'm going to delete the live versions and just put one version out on the website so um, uh, so everybody can, can view the, the business meeting and the presentation all together. So anyway, uh, that's it, folks. I want to – oh, here we go. Bill, hang on, um, Dale. One – Oh, Bill said, yeah, what if several question. stations come back to you on your CQ? Okay. Well, you pick the one you want. <laughs> you can, you can call both of them, but it may, it's kind of confusing for the other stations. If you do that, I've had that happen before. And uh, I usually just pick the uh, strongest one. It it's up to you. Is there any, any Q code or any, um, <clears throat> Any symbol that are um, um, key, uh, letter combination that you send to say I heard all the rest of the stations, um, please stand by. I don't know of any abbreviation or cue signal for that. I guess you could say that it would be a lot easier on voice to just say, uh, you know, there's another station, and you see if you want to have a round table, and you can do that on CW. I don't know if I've done that or not. Um, but I don't think there's any particular cue signal for that. Okay. Very good. All right. If that is it, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone. Sorry for the technical detail or technical issues. Um, Hopefully we'll do, uh, if we have to do this again, hopefully there won't be a a lightning storm in the area. So very good. Thanks, Dale. And uh, we will uh, see you guys later. Take care. Bye.